USPSA limited division rules maximum magazine length 141.25 millimeters where do you start the measurement end it Is it here or here? Before we get too into this video, I want to shout out one of this channel's sponsors, LimaCharlieUSA.com. Let's check out a couple of the cool designs that they have. Alrighty everybody, here you have it, LimaCharlieUSA.com. We've got Canic Fanatic gear, army designs, patriotic stuff. Man, they've got Jeep things and support for hurricane relief. So for all you military peeps out there, let's just check out a couple of these military designs. Check these out. All these cool military designs, Coast Guard, infantry, a lot of really neat designs there. Patriotic and pro-gun stuff. Second Amendment rights. If you're into jeeping, off-roading, here you go. Section for you. you. Guys, come on here and check all of this stuff out. There's a lot of great stuff for an excellent price and if you use the promo code pol10 that's capital p capital o capital l 10 then you'll get 10 percent off your entire order on limacharlieusa.com all right now back to the regular schedule video all right ladies and gentlemen kai here with the path of life and i'm coming at you with another video here today because we are talking about magazine length and measurement of magazine length how do you measure a magazine correctly to make sure that you're getting the right measurement 100%? That's a, a really difficult one and a question that I get asked a lot about the 140 millimeter rule USPSA. Like, how do you measure that? How do you know which side do you measure? Where do you measure from? And how do you know if the measurements that you're getting are accurate? and how can you reliably measure so that when you go to a competition you don't have to worry about the officials telling you that your magazine extensions are too long. Well first and foremost uh, the suggestion that I could give you is to buy a magazine extension that you already know that the length is what is uh, is the length that is permitted in USPSA that the magazine extension itself is an approved length. But if you want to make sure for yourself what you need is a USPSA magazine gauge, okay? This little piece of metal here is called the mag gauge and it will save you a ton of heartache in trying to figure out if your custom magazines are going to work right. Now this is how it works. This side here says 141.25 millimeter. This side right here says 171.25 millimeter. Now for open division and for single stack, you use 171.25 millimeters. For most of the other divisions, you would use this side right here with the 141.25 millimeters. And this is how it works. You take your magazine, you slap it in there, and check that out. It fits, right? I don't have to force it down in there or shimmy it or jim it or whatever. It just it just fits in there. I can just set it in and it fits. Now this is the Taylor Freelance Plus 4 magazine extension for the Canic TP9 series. And as you can see, it fits that magazine gauge like a glove. Okay, so now what about some other ones? In the last video that I did on magazine extensions, we talked about the Terran Tactical Plus 4 for the CZ-75 plate. Now, most CZ-75 plates have the same issue as this plate in that it's made for a CZ-75 pistol. It's not that the Terran Tactical is a bad company. It's that the Terran Tactical CZ-75 plate doesn't fit with this. Similar problems with the P226 magazine extensions. It's just a slightly different geometry on the magazine. And so when you put it into the magazine gauge, it just doesn't quite fit. 
So how about a magazine that I got a lot of questions about after the video comparing those three magazine extensions, the Kane Arms 3D printed magazine extension. I got a lot of comments saying that this magazine did not fit the magazine gauge. And I had taken this magazine down to the local range here and had tested it and it fit. Now, I ended up getting this one shipped out to me because I wanted to make sure that one, I could do a video on this and have some time with it to make this video for you. And second, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't something off with their magazine gauge and that it just fit in that one miraculously somehow, but then all other magazine gauges it doesn't fit in. So I got this one sent out to me, brand new, and voila. It fits. Check that out. A little bit of wiggle even. Now why is this important? Why, why would it be, you know, why is it that big of a deal if you're just slightly over, like with this uh, CZ75 plate on Mechanic Magazine? Why, why does it matter that this is just a tiny bit off and that it doesn't quite fit all the way? It matters because if you're competing in limited division or in carry optics, two uh, divisions in competition USPSA that require a 140 millimeter maximum length on your magazine and you have a magazine that's too long then that throws you into open division because this magazine fits this side of the gauge perfectly with about an inch to spare but it doesn't fit this side so Basically, what it does is it throws you into open division, which means that you're competing against $2,500 and up race guns with compensators, uh, with dots mounted on the frame of the handgun instead of the slide, so you have a lot less reciprocating mass. You have uh, magazine wells. You have 170 millimeter magazines can fit 27 rounds. These, with these extensions on them, fit 22. That extra five or so rounds makes a world of difference in how many times they have to reload and the placement of those reloads in the stages. They have a lot more options of things that they can do to run the course in a way to where it's going to be beneficial to them. It's kind of like the difference between drag racing in a stock Mustang or a Bugatti. Okay, you have... The stock Mustang is a great car, and it's a fast car, but the stock Mustang doesn't have anything on a Bugatti in a drag race. So in a car race, if you have a Mustang, you want to be competing against other Mustangs. You don't want to be competing against the, the souped-up supercars, okay? So the same thing in gun racing. You want to be competing within your class. So essentially that's what a magazine gauge does, is it keeps everybody accountable to their division and holds them to the restrictions of that division without any wishy-washiness. Even trying to use digital calipers to measure these magazines, it's, it's difficult to get a consistent measurement. Using a ruler, it's impossible. So this is something easy that the range officials can use to ensure that you are in compliance with your division. So if you have something that you're not sure fits this magazine gauge, then I would suggest calling your local range, um, especially if your range does USPSA competitions or three gun competitions, they'll probably have one of these gauges on hand and you can ask them if you can go down there and measure your magazines. Just so that you don't show up on competition day with new gear and go, oh, surprise, you're competing in open division when you don't want to be. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful in describing the magazine gauge and what the magazine gauge is good for. If you haven't already, then hit that subscribe link that's right up above me. We have some pretty cool stuff coming out, including our giveaway at 500 subscribers, which we are getting so close to. Until next time, take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. Peace out.